Kira Internet. I'm at Araki Mount Cook. It's been pouring with rain this morning, so we're just waiting to find out if the trip that we had booked for this afternoon is actually going to go ahead or not. The weather has cleared a little bit. You can actually see the mountains now, and you couldn't a few hours ago. But it's still drizzling a bit, so they're going to let us know in about 20 minutes whether it's going to go ahead. Guys, once we start doing the walk, please try to stay together. If anyone's having a, uh, any issues with the walk, I'm going too fast. This park, Sir Ed honed his skills for his Himalayan expeditions before summiting Mount Everest alongside his Sherpa guide, Tenzing Norgay, on May 29, 1953. You'll see that this water does not share Lake Pukaki's majestic blue, rather it is a chalky, milky grey. This water contains a type of sediment known as glacial rock flour. This is created by glaciers as they advance down the valleys. Alright guys, so Jerry's just going to check the bus, make sure you're not forgetting your camera, it's not going to stop. Good luck, the other one. Oh yeah, you put an hour out there, um, the glacier. Bobby, thank you. All right, guys, welcome to the lake. Have a good look at that view before the clouds keep on moving. Because even with the clouds as they are, it's still one of the most stunning views in the South Island. You've got Auraki Mount Cook, the tallest mountain in New Zealand. The cloud is just ripping through it. You can see the ridge going up into the clouds. Well, that's the terminal face or the terminus for New Zealand's largest glacier, the Tasman Glacier. That's where the largest glacier in New Zealand comes to die. That's where it stops. Literally halfway from that wall towards us, there's ice coming out underwater. A gigantic ice ramp, if you will. And every now and then, the entire base of the glacier collapses at the same time. And you've got a piece that can be 800 meters across just exploding from underwater with literally no warning. Now let me put into perspective what you're looking at because I guarantee you lose your sense of scale out here. From one side to the other, that wall is one and a half kilometers wide, 1.5. It's also 30 meters tall above the water. That's an average. So it's closer to 24 meters down here where it dips. It's closer to 41 back there, that big tall pillar. Every time a piece of the glacier breaks, it ends up floating in the lake. They're called icebergs, and they literally get pushed around by the wind. So today, we've been pushed into this corner. Yesterday, all that ice was about four kilometers further up. Pieces that have broken from the glacier have ended up floating in the lake, and they're at the mercy of the wind, of the waves. Today, they're so pushed into this corner that most of them are touching the bottom of the lake right here, where it's shallowest. If this was a person, you're just seeing its head. Shoulders to feet are still underwater. Can you see where the waves are hitting it? Can you see how it's kind of melting a hole in there? Look at the pieces that are breaking away from the icebergs. It's very cold. <laughs> Feel how smooth it is, and guys, if you're hungry, you can eat that ice. Or try to, it's really hard. <laughs> oh, big wave. Big wave. <laughs> Sorry. Now, hopefully this will give us a better angle to take you to see the other iceberg. 
another example where it's just ice boulders one on top of another but look at the beautiful blue at the bottom now if anyone's into photos with the blue iceberg will and mount cook behind it that might be the photo smile guys you're gonna be famous air bubbles inside of it starts to get start to get warmer they'll expand right as the air bubbles expand it'll crack the ice from the inside and it'll make it wider and wider and wider so when you look around particularly those icebergs behind me and they look pretty white it's because that ice has been in the sun this ice hasn't look at that is that not stunning It's really hard to see right now. I mean, the, the iceberg's giving this wind protection, but this entire iceberg is drifting this way. We're getting closer to that wall. If you look at a point behind it, look at the mountains, you can actually see the iceberg spinning. Did you get to touch? Yes? Now, if any of the kids wants to unload and stay on this iceberg, I can come pick you up when we finish the tour. <laughs> but that's only if the weather permits. Otherwise, it might be a couple hours or days. <laughs> See how solid that is? So when it's the smooth ice, when it's the blue ice, that ice is ice at its absolute densest. If you manage to put it into your drink, it could last up to three times longer than normal ice. Now, can you notice a difference? There's a really clear difference between this ice you're touching and that ice back there. They're not the same iceberg. This was one iceberg down here, this beautiful solid blue. And that was another iceberg that landed on top of this one. And that's why it broke into all those beautiful icebergs. <laughs> here we go. Oh, Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Seriously cool, definitely worth doing. If you get the chance, I seriously recommend it. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Yaki to our no internet.